Hey everybody, CW here, Card Wolf, because I'm always on the hunt for great cards. Happy 4th of July. If you are in the U.S., it is Independence Day, and I hope you are celebrating and having a good time with your friends and family, or just relaxing and hanging out by yourself, enjoying the day off. Some people have tomorrow off as well on Friday, uh, and other people do not. Some people maybe have taken it off. Maybe you're on vacation and you're watching the Card Wolf Network. I do not know, but I hope that you're having a good time, whatever you're doing. We are opening Panini Golden Age 2013 today. We have been enjoying Panini Golden Age 2012 for the last two weeks. I've really been enjoying it. You guys seem pretty pumped about it. This is the second year that they did this product, 2013. And uh, like the first year, it is full of uh, a lot of baseball Hall of Famers and legends, as well as movie stars and entertainers and all kinds of public figures and whatnot. So uh should be very interesting to get into this. The checklist has different people on it than were in the uh, first set, but similar to the first set, we will get an autograph and a relic card out of here. There are also several different inserts. There should be a box topper, all kinds of fun stuff in this. I don't know if any of the insert uh, types from the first... Uh, 2012 series of this are carried over. I'm not not too sure about that, but uh, there is one in here that I read about and sounds really good, and that is the playing card inserts, where uh, they're actually in the form of you know like playing cards like Queen of Hearts, you know Seven of Diamonds, stuff like that. So uh, that should be a lot of fun. Here's the back of the big box of this, nice hobby box of this, and you can see it has 150 cards on the checklist, and then there are a whole bunch of other uh, inserts there that gives you a look. You can pause it and read through it if you are interested in that. Very nice sort of matte finish on this box. Feels very old-timey and classic, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this. There is our box topper right on the top there. Now, I have never opened a pack of this. I got into the 2012 product because I found a pack of it in a Fairfield Pharmacy box, but I've never opened a pack of this. So this will be a brand new experience for me. I've never seen anybody open this before, so maybe it'll be the first time for you as well. You have to let me know what you think of it in the comments below. I am curious always to know what you guys think. It looks like they did the same thing in these that they did in the... Uh, the initial 2012 release of this, which is that they put a bunch of uh, sort of, you can see it there. Now this looks like it should be a relic card, but then you look at the first stack I took out and this one does, and this one does, and this one does. And so I, I honestly have no idea if any of those are actual relics because they put in spacers to fool everyone. And so uh, let's count off, see what we have here. At two, four, six, eight, 10 and 11. We'll pull one from this stack just for the heck of it. 12. So there we got a nice assortment from throughout the box. Should be a lot of fun to get into this and see what we get. Like I said, I've never opened this particular uh, year of this product before. I have only ever opened the 2012, so this will be new for me as well. It's the box topper. It is oversized, as you can see. We'll carefully rip this open and see what we get out of here. Uh, I think this is going to be like postcard size by the looks of it. So let's see how we do. It is, it is Johnny Bench. That is sweet. Very nice card of Johnny Bench. I like that one. That is really nice. Feels a uh, very thick cardboard there. It's card number 10. I believe there are 40 different uh, subjects, some of which are sports subjects and some of which are not. Uh, I will go ahead and grab a card stand, one of Ryan's card stands from Bucks and Six. Thank you once again, Ryan, for 3D printing those for me. I use them all the time now, and I never used card stands before. Let's open our first pack and see what these hold. Should be six cards in the pack, and again, there should be lots of inserts in here, and we have a chance of pulling an autograph out of today's rip. We're going to rip half the box today and half the box next week, just like we did with the 2012 box. Going to do the same thing here, so we could find our our relic card and our autograph today. We could find one and not the other, or we may not find either one of them and have to wait until next week to see what we get. Let's find out. So there's our first look at this product. Definitely a different design than the 2012 version of this. That's Norm Cash from the Tigers. Good first baseman for them. Let's see what the back looks like. Very classy looking back as well. That looks somewhat similar to the 2012 
version of this, but it's got its own sort of flair as well. So pretty cool. I, I do like the design on 2012 and 2013 pretty equally. There's Fred Bolitnikoff, the great wide receiver for the Raiders. Interestingly, they do have football logos, but not baseball logos because Panini had the football license at this time, but not the baseball one. There's a mini card. I think we get one of these in every pack. That's Arthur Rothstein, who is a gambler, apparently. Get that out. I don't know if you can read that. You need your spectacles, much like me. But Arthur Rothstein was apparently a gambler. Now see, the inclusion of this guy, who I've never heard of, and a gambler, really? That makes me feel like this is drifting maybe a little too much towards the dreaded Allen and Ginter. That, that's, you know, it's not a social media person, so it's not quite at that level. But still, this is Abe Attell, the boxing champ, and he looks like someone you would not want to meet in a dark alley at night. Ron Swoboda from the Mets, decent outfielder for them. And there's Johnny Carson, the famous late night talk show host. There, we get into our second pack, see how we do out of these. I do like the card design quite a lot, and I'm curious to see what the inserts look like. I did not do a whole lot of research on this before we started. Stanley Livingston, who uh, ostensibly is an actor, I don't recognize him. He is not... Uh, Tony Dow or anybody from Leave It to Beaver that I'm aware of. Looks like he was in uh, TV's You At... Oh, he was in Ozzie and Harriet. All right. Ozzie and Harriet, one of the longest running shows on television. And I guess he was in that. I never really was a fan of that show, so I'm not familiar with it. Here we get our first playing card, and it is of the Titanic. That is wild. Look at that. It's got the rounded edges, and it's got a very cool back. Check out the back of that. That is sweet. That is really cool. I like that a lot. That is... Uh, that is really awesome. I'm going to put that in the Wolf Lair for sure. Our mini card is Tommy John, who pitched for several different teams, including the Yankees and the White Sox and several others. Tommy John, of course, most famous these days. He was a really good pitcher. He has a great record, but he's most famous these days for the rotator cuff surgery that he had, which is uh, often referred to as Tommy John surgery, but uh, he was a good pitcher. Surgery or not, Bobby Jones, the famous hobbyist for his golf acumen, Sent all of the golf cards off to uh, Ryan's dad at Bucks in Six, Rob, who apparently likes golf and thinks of it as a sport, which is delusional. Joe Morgan, greatest second baseman in history, quite possibly. He thinks he's number one. Check that out. I think he's number one, too. I'm, I currently think Joe Morgan is the greatest, but uh, followed closely by Rogers Hornsby and Nat, Nat Joey, in my opinion. So that's a nice one. I like that one. I'll probably put that in the Wolf Lair. And more horse racing cards. There's Affirmed from... Uh, the 1978 horse racing series. I am not a horse racing fan, but uh, Frank asked for the horse racing cards from The Last Rip, and I sent as many as I could to him, and I hope that he uh, enjoyed them. He sent me a very nice note back. So, Frank, if you want more horse racing cards, let me know if any of you are interested in cards from uh, this set that I do not keep for myself. Definitely let me know. There's Grantland Rice, who was a sports writer, not a hobbyist, though that shows him with a golf club. He was a sports writer, and I agree. This will maybe be, a, I don't know, it'll sound hypocritical or something, but I'm totally in favor of putting writers on trading cards. That does not happen often enough, and I am in complete agreement with that. We got our autograph card. It's Bobby Richardson. Wow, third pack. We got our autograph card. That's crazy. So Bobby Richardson there, he was a really good player for the Yankees for many years, and... Uh, See, the back does actually have the same picture on it. And uh, he I know he was a really good fielder, and uh, he went to the World Series with the Yankees at least a couple times. So Bobby Richardson is our autograph card. I have to get another. Let's see what I have over here. Get a blue one for Yankee Blue. Put Richardson back there. So there we get our autograph card. Our next card looks to be Greg Brady. Our mini card is Greg Brady, or Barry Williams, as he is known in real life, IRL. We got Sham who is a thoroughbred horse that I've never heard of, and Tommy Smothers of the Smothers Brothers. They were a comedy duo in the 60s and I guess the 70s too. Earl Campbell, that's a nice one. I like that one. I'm going to say right now, as we continue on through here, too many non-sports figures. The first set I feel like had a really good mix. It was pretty heavy on baseball, and every now and then you get some kind of a non-sport figure, but this is... Uh, this is over the top with the non-sport figures. We've got Alan Hale, who was the captain on Gilligan's Island, which is a show I was never very into, but uh, I don't know. Some people liked it. LBJ sworn in as president. There's our first insert. It is a headlines insert, and there is our first fake 
relic card. <laughs> Toss that there. We got uh, Bo Schwendler, who was a football coach that I'm not familiar with, probably a college coach. Buckwheat, who uh, another non-sports figure. Angel Cordero, famous jockey. And Tatum O'Neill from the Bad News Bears. That's a pretty cool card, actually. I... I don't know if I'm going to keep that one or not. I'm going to I'm going to put that in there, and if somebody is really excited about that card, I'm not going to keep it from their collection. I know a lot of people really love that movie. I'm kind of I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about that movie. I I've liked it, but I, I don't think it's held up very well over the years. There's Woodrow Wilson, who was one of our presidents from back in the day. There's another Gilligan's Island actor. It's Bob Denver, who himself was Gilligan. Here's another fake uh, fake out card. <laughs> So bizarre that they do that. There's affirmed in the mini card version, and Gerald Ford, our second that's our second president out of this pack. I believe it is Gerald Ford took over for Nixon. And then we got Taft, who is famous for getting stuck in a bathtub during his administration. It's true, it's a true story. You can look that up online. William Howard Taft was a large gentleman and he got stuck in a bathtub. There's Jim Kick running back for Miami. I believe he was on the uh, Dolphins' unbeaten team back in the 70s, along with Larry Zonka in the backfield. Here we got, uh, finally we got a baseball player starting to pack off. It's Miller Huggins, who I believe is in the Hall of Fame. He is a great manager for uh, New York there. Secretariat, that is pretty cool. This is uh, in the style of the old DeLong gum cards, which I think are beautiful cards. And they're back from uh, the 30s, I believe. And Beautiful, beautiful cards, and I love that style, and I wish so much that it had been a baseball player. I'm really disappointed that that's a horse racing card, but I guess I'll put that in the insert stack just the same. Ron Guidry, with uh, a really uh, questionable haircut there, who was a great pitcher for the Yankees for many years in the 80s and the 70s. Al Kaline, Tiger Great, Tommy John, there he is on the larger format card, and another president, Jimmy Carter there, who uh, had, you know, a lot of people... Maybe question his presidency. I, I thought he did a pretty good job with what he had to work with. What I'm really impressed with from Jimmy Carter is what he did after his presidency. He spent so much of his life being a volunteer and doing things for people who uh, were in difficult circumstances. Really great man and a great human being. Doak Walker there, great halfback for the Lions. I believe he's in the Football Hall of Fame. He should be. If he's not, there's Joe Tinker on the playing card format. That's pretty sweet. I like that one a lot. That will certainly go on the Wolf Lair. Joe Tinker, famous uh, shortstop, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Wyatt Earp, that's pretty cool. Nice mini card of Wyatt Earp, the U.S. Marshal from Tombstone and other famous Western stories. Bill Freon, another Tigers player. A lot of Tigers in this. There's Jan Stevenson, hobbyist, who uh, spends her time practicing the hobby of golf. We got Dale Murphy, very nice Dale Murphy card. That would look good with a signature on it. No question about that. I know many of you TTM, and I've been told that Dale Murphy is a very good TTM. -er, so that may be a card that entices you. What do we have here? We got uh, Jack Daubert, who played for uh, Brooklyn back in the day. I don't know if Jack Daubert's in the Hall of Fame or not. I uh, actually am not too familiar with his career, so I'll have to check into that. We get another playing card. That one is Seabiscuit. The legendary racehorse that a movie was made about. It's so famous, the story of Seabiscuit. I'm going to keep that just because I'm keeping all the playing cards, but I'm not excited about that. Nice Jim Rice card. I'm going to keep that one, too. That is sweet. I've collected Jim Rice off and on over the years, and I just like that one. So I'm going to hang on to that. Tris Speaker, another beautiful card there. I like that one. Very nice. And there's the full-size Jim Rice. I'll put all those on the Wolf Lair. Daryl Waltrip, a uh, famous NASCAR racer. Winner of the Daytona 500 at least once, if not several times. Daryl Waltrip. Let's go to our next pack. Again, I wish there were more baseball in here and less weird stuff, including the Apollo 11 capsule. I'm using the British pronunciation there. The Apollo 11 capsule from its journey to the moon. I believe this is still in the Smithsonian, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that is where that is kept. Jacob Rupert, wow, that's pretty cool. He was the owner of uh, the Yankees for a while, if I'm remembering my uh, baseball history correctly, and I think he is in the Hall of Fame. We got two of the same card back-to-back -back here. Harry Houdini, that is sweet. The mini card and the larger card, I am delighted about that one. Houdini definitely goes in the wolf lair. And Bob Greasy, another dolphin great from that unbeaten team 
And there's Stan Lee. That one is one that I know one of you is going to want. Stan Lee, the legendary comic artist and uh, just amazing, amazing figure at Marvel Comics. I know one of you is going to want that one. I met Stan Lee a couple of times and all the stories you hear about him and all the things you see in his interviews where he just seems like this super friendly, gregarious guy, that was 100% what he was really like in meeting him. So I can absolutely verify he's he was absolutely the type of person that he portrayed himself as. There was no nothing fake about the guy. Eve Plum, who played Jan Brady on The Brady Bunch. We get another insert card here. This is the Three Stooges insert. It's a Golden Age a lobby card type looking card. Lobby cards were put out on easels in front of the uh, movie theaters to entice people to come in there and see them. Um, and that is probably what one looked like. So there's another insert there. More Gilligan's Island stuff. Rod Serling, who created the Twilight Zone TV series. That's what he's best known for. So that one's uh, kind of interesting. Al Simmons, great outfielder there. And uh, Bo Schembechler, again, makes an appearance. I'm going to have to find out what the deal is with that guy, because I really don't. Yeah, he uh, he won a bunch of Big Ten titles. I don't really follow college football, so that's probably why I've never heard of the guy. But I'm sure that he was a very good football coach. If you're enjoying this episode, please hit the thumbs up. It does a lot of great things for the channel, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is Richie Ashburn, Hall of Famer there for the Phillies. One of their all-time great players, no question about that. And we got another insert, and that one is cool. This is a bread label insert of Eddie... Sikot from Chicago. That is uh, really unusual. I, I What a neat die cut insert. Looks very old timey. Wow, that is neat. I like that one a lot. I wish it were a player that I collected or was more interested in, but uh, very, very cool insert. That is, uh, I hope we get more of those in the second half of this box. There is, what is this? I don't even know who this is. And of course it doesn't say on the back. I wish it would do that. Fielding Yost football coach. Wow. Not sure I know him. Another college coach, perhaps. Stan Musial. Cardinals great. And an, a really nice guy from everything I've heard. John Belushi. And uh, another Bad News Bears actor. This one is Gary Lee Cavagnaro, who uh, I don't think went on to do very much after Bad News Bears, at least as far as I know. Get into our last pack, and this one is a little bit thicker, so this could have our relic card in here, or it could be another fake. It is. It is another fake relic card, which I guess I approve of. I mean, it keeps people from doing pack searching and stuff like that. This is the unsinkable Molly Brown. That is awesome. Wow, I've never gotten a trading card of her, and that is really cool. That one is going into the Wolf Lair, no question about it. Like that one, and we get another playing card. It's JFK. Again, not that interested in that, but I, I am kind of interested in keeping the playing card, so I guess I'll hang on to that one. Really not pumped about that. Our mini card out of this pack is Miller Huggins. We see him again. I think we saw him earlier on the regular size. Frank Chance. So we got, uh, I believe we got Joe Tinker earlier, and then we get Frank Chance. We just need Evers. Lyndon Johnson, the grouchy-looking president there, and Ron Guidry with his horrible haircut finishes off that pack. So we are still due our relic card. This was the same way the 2012 box went. We got our autograph card in the first half of the rip and got our relic card in the second half, and it was a good relic card. If you haven't seen the second half of that 2012 Golden Age rip, I encourage you to do so. It was a pretty cool relic card. And then we got uh, LBJ, we got the Three Stooges, and Secretariat as part of our inserts there. So definitely kept some in the Wolf Lair. That was a lot of fun. Hope you guys are having a great 4th of July if you're celebrating that here in the U.S., enjoying your holiday and thank you so much for taking some time today to spend it with me checking out this very cool box of golden age 2013 so we'll do the second half of this box next week stay tuned for that on the channel tomorrow dorking with dice will happen on this channel it's going to be a lot of fun it always is vintage packs of baseball and a big d20 to tell us what we get to open enjoy the rest of your holiday I'll see you back here very soon thank you so much for coming out and as always happy collecting